So then his pal in the United States, Donald Trump, and you wonder what does Putin have on Donald Trump that he always has to be beholden to him, his mm-hmm. buddy, his buddy in vileness. What does he have on Donald Trump that he have to constantly be catering to Putin? I don't know, Nancy. Special counsel Robert Mueller and his investigation into possible collusion between Trump and Vladimir Putin cost the US taxpayers $30 million and turned up no evidence. So you tell me. But Democrats are unfortunately now double dipping in Russia conspiracy theories ahead of the 2024 presidential election because of course they are. Now in the clip that we just showed you, Jen Psaki and Nancy Pelosi were specifically losing their minds over Trump's tweets following the death of Putin's main political opponent, Alexei Navalny. And it's very likely that Putin ordered the killing of Navalny. But in following news of that, of course, Trump went out, he he posts on Truth Social, and he loves to make everything about himself. We all know that. So here's what he said. The sudden death of Navalny has made me more and more aware of what is happening in our country. It is a slow, steady progression with crooked, radical left politicians. We have no radical left politicians. Like I, it, Every time they say we have radical left politicians, it cracks me up. But anyway, radical left politicians, prosecutors, and judges leading us down a path to destruction. Open borders, rigged elections, and grossly unfair courtroom decisions are destroying America. We are a nation in decline, a failing nation, MAGA 2024. So that post was what Jen Psaki showed Nancy Pelosi as Pelosi was making those allegations about Trump being in bed with Vladimir Putin. But look, Pelosi isn't the only one who's leaning into those conspiracies about Trump and Russia. MSNBC's Willie Geist and Ken Delanian directly connected news of former FBI informant Alexander Smirnov's arrest and his reported Russian intel contacts to Hunter Biden's laptop, even though there's Again, no evidence linking Russia to Hunter Biden's laptop. So as a refresher, Smirnov had told the FBI that Joe and Hunter Biden took $5 million each in foreign bribes. They claim that since the newly indicted Smirnov admitted that he had received his faulty information from Russia, that must mean that the discovery of Hunter Biden's laptop is linked to Russia. And this was, of course, a big story back in 2020. There was no evidence showing that there's a connection between Hunter Biden's laptop and Russia. But nonetheless, I want to give you a little taste of how that segment went down, and then I'll give you more. Those 51 former intelligence officials, they paid a steep price for signing that letter. The House Republicans conducted an investigation. They brought some of them in to testify under oath. The Republicans said this was election interference. This was a bogus attempt to suppress a legitimate story. And as it turns out, they were right. Not in the sense, they said that the laptop was part of a Russian information operation or had all the hallmarks of a Russian information operation. They didn't say that the contents of the laptop were made up. And obviously, so we know that they weren't. Many of them have been now corroborated. What they said was they were suspicious about why that story was emerging in the middle of an election campaign and whether Russian intelligence was flogging it or was somehow amplifying it. Jenk, I don't. Did that sound insane to you? Yeah. That sounded insane to me. That sounded in. Saying to me, and when she, when he's referring to the 51 people yeah. who signed the letter at the beginning of the clip, he's referring to the former intelligence officials who had signed a letter urging, you know, Twitter at the time to uh, shadow ban content and you know anything that having to do with Hunter Biden's laptop. The New York Post got a lot of backlash for reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop. That's what they're referring to. Yeah. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members, and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. So let me take this one at a time. On Trump's Navalny tweet, look, the guys, Trump's crazy. No, Navalny is actually incredibly courageous in standing up to Putin and then seems to have perhaps been killed by Putin, but certainly. Uh, imprisoned and tortured and abused in every way uh, by Putin for being. Donald Trump actually broke tons of real laws. 
and he has not been imprisoned. He is that he's skirted every legal penalty his entire life. He's the exact opposite of Navalny. For all the laws that he actually broke, he's never suffered any consequence yet. So he's just a rich crybaby. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that what the Democrats are trying to do is say that, and I've seen this all over cable news, is that can you believe he said that about himself and Navalny? That means that that's it, now we got him. That, that shows that he's totally deranged and loves Putin and okay, and the American people are gonna turn up. No, the American people are not gonna notice this statement at all. They're not gonna notice, they're not gonna care. It's a tiny, tiny drop in an ocean of Trump stories and madness, and it's a relatively small drop. Okay, now to Smirnoff. Smirnoff was lying about Joe Biden being connected to Hunter Biden. Uh, the Republicans apparently knew it, uh, according to Repu uh, Republican Congressman Ken Buck. He says Comer and Jordan did know uh, that this guy's information was not corroborated, and they went with it anyway. Of course, because Comer and Jordan are giant liars, and they don't they wouldn't care if that guy had, was a serial killer. They would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, he's totally right, he's totally right, and they wouldn't have cared if the FBI told them, don't use the evidence. It's definitely wrong. They would use it anyway, right? And Smirnov is connected to the Russians. Having said that, that segment that we just showed you was crazy. Why was it crazy? Because it, it was kind of a Fox News like segment. They never, yes. they never said that Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russian operation, but they heavily, heavily implied it. But there's actually no evidence of that. And they never stated clearly, oh, by the way, there's no evidence at all. That the laptop was connected to the Russians. Instead, they made the average MSNBC viewer think, aha, we knew it. The laptop's the Russians too. It's all the dastardly Russians. They're they're obsessed with Russia. And I have a theory as to why. But uh but that was a that was a pretty dirty Fox News like trick on MSNBC's part. I, I have to weigh in on all of that before we go to Paul Begala, because I know why, Jenk. I think we all know why. It's the same reason why the Democratic establishment leans so heavily on the Russia collusion angle following Hillary Clinton's failure to beat Donald Trump. It's because they don't want to take responsibility for the fact that they are not popular with their own base. Their base does not feel that they're looking out for them. That is the reason what part of the reason why Joe Biden has a low approval rating. So I they want to make it appear as though, no, no, Joe Biden's actually an angel and he's doing a great job. And the only reason why he's losing favorability is because of all this Russian manipulation, all this disinformation, that kind of stuff. And it's frustrating because I guess I'm at the point of my life where I just expect adults to take some personal responsibility, just take a moment for self reflection and really question, hey, what is it that I'm doing that my, my, Base, you know, the core demographics that are typically a given in, in elections are now kind of starting to spread over to the Republican Party in some case. You see Trump increasing his support among um, you know, black voters, Hispanic voters, young voters. What is going on here? Instead, they they just it's it's a way of skirting personal responsibility and actually doing the necessary work to figure out what your voters actually want. I think that's what it is. I could be wrong, but that's the feeling that I get. Yeah, no, I, I'll add on to that. So when you look at them blaming, the Democrats blaming Russia for everything, it's kind of weird to the rest of us. Like, okay, blame them for the things they actually did. Smirnoff apparently worked with the Russians, and the Russians did help a little bit for Donald Trump in 2016, although it was not coordinated with Donald Trump. Okay, you could have those critiques, and I've had those critiques. But it shouldn't swallow up your life. But every time they're on TV, Russia, 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 Russia. That part, the MAGA is kind of right about. They're obsessed with it. So then I was trying to figure out why. Why are you so obsessed? So there's a couple of reasons. One is it's their excuse for all their losses, right? And that's what Anna partly said, and a lot of folks online say it. Anytime they lose, it was the dog ate my homework and it was Russia. Or, or maybe you're not very good at this, then you're all of your policies are geared towards supporting your donors and not your voters and you don't know, give a damn about your base and yelling rush afterwards doesn't help you. Okay, that's point one. Point two is they love to say that anyone who 
critiques anyone in Democratic leadership like Joe Biden is a traitor. So like, for example, today Fetterman said that if you ever criticize Joe Biden, you might as well put on a MAGA hat. Okay, so and and of course, if you're a traitor, you work for the Russians. So any critique of Pelosi or Biden, et cetera, means you're a Russian. Uh, not just Republicans, but that one's a little bit broader, okay? But I think the main reason, Anna, is that is something that we have a lot of trouble relating to. And I've said this about Biden many times, but it's true for all of these politicians who are in their 70s and 80s in, in Washington. There's frozen in amber between the 1970s and 1990s. Those were their formative years. And in those years, all you had to say was Russia. And everybody would go, ah, and they'd panic and they'd say, oh, that guy's a trade. And then they would lose all the elections because you just said the connected them to Russia. It was right after McCarthyite stuff, and they and the Democrats were smeared with that. And so, and it worked back then. So they think, oh, perfect. We finally, after 40, 50 years, get to smear the Republicans with Russia. Except it's 40 years later, and the situation has changed completely, and it doesn't work at all. And you guys look like jackasses who are obsessed with something from 48 years ago when you should be actually trying to work for your voters. I, it's hard for us to understand because you think, really? They really can't get out of a mindset from 40, 50 years ago? And the answer to me, I think, is overwhelmingly yes. You know, it's, it is incredible that the big claim coming from the Democratic establishment against Donald Trump is that he's being manipulated and controlled by Vladimir Putin and Russia. That a foreign country with a foreign leader is controlling one of our leaders. And oh my God, isn't that such a terrible thing? And if proven to be true, of course it's a terrible thing. But at the same time, let's not forget, and Fetterman is well versed in this. Isn't it also foreign control when politicians are so terrified of APAC spending tens of millions, in some cases, hundreds of millions of dollars against candidates who dare to critique how Israel is carrying out its war in Gaza? I mean, it's just really interesting the kind of double standard that we're seeing here. And by the way, that's not just something that impacts Democrats, that impacts most politicians in American government across the political spectrum. But it is just interesting how that kind of foreign influence has, or influence that serves the best interests of a foreign country above our own. That gets kind of dismissed as no big deal. But when it comes to the possibility of Putin controlling one of our leaders, which again has not been proven, even despite that lengthy investigation that was done by Robert Mueller, that's a big deal, right? That's a that's a huge injustice, and we should be super scared about it. Again, if it is proven, it is a big deal, and I think it is a problem. But we're experiencing foreign influence as we speak, and no one's even worried about yeah. it at all. So that's a great point. I mean, it's a case of projection. They're like, we're controlled by Netanyahu. And so uh, we assume that Trump is controlled by Putin. I mean, who they assume that you, you're working for a foreign leader of some sort for money. Oh, we picked Netanyahu, who'd you pick? Oh, I guess he must have picked Putin. But Anna's also right that it's not just we picked Netanyahu. Mike Johnson gets a huge amount of money from AIPAC. They spend hundreds of millions, not on any particular race, but overall combined. And so are they all affected by the enormous amount of money that AIPAC spends either on their behalf or against them? To say that they're not affected by that is just a lie on their behalf. And what's funny is that when they say it repeatedly about Russia, and but if you say it about Israel, they'll all say, it's offensive. It's very anti-Semitic and that is, you cannot say that you're controlled by a foreign leader. And Trump is controlled by a foreign leader named Putin. Yeah, to totally, totally, exactly. So I wanna get to Paul Begala because there's more on this. Um, now, apparently Paul Begala feels that Biden would be a stronger and tougher fighter as president as opposed to Donald Trump. And so what sparked this discussion was a statement that Biden made during a fundraiser, fittingly, in San Francisco. So Biden was actually talking about the potential of nuclear war in off the cuff remarks. And he was specifically referring to Vladimir Putin and Russia. He said, we have a crazy SOB 
like that guy Putin and others. And we always have to worry about nuclear conflict. Now, in response to that, a Putin spokesperson told Reuters that Biden's language is shameful and that the president was trying to act like a Hollywood cowboy. Look, what the Putin spokesperson has to say doesn't really interest me at all, but I will say that Hollywood cowboy is a funny phrase. But Paul Begala took that one statement from Biden and made a lot, a lot of it. So let's just watch the video and you'll see what I mean. And I wonder what you make of, of how Biden has been speaking about Putin compared with what we've heard from, from Trump himself just saying yesterday that he's like the, the dissident who was killed in Russia. Yeah, I think this is great. This is Biden being strong and Trump being weak. And Trump voters love this notion that he's strong. And I think Biden should press this. Putin's got something on Trump. And what he's got is a particular part of his anatomy right in his pocket. Trump spends all his time bowing before Putin on his knees to Putin. He's weak, weak, weak. And here's Joe, who's supposed to be a doddering old man. He's ready to take the fight to Putin. So Cenk, before I go to you, I think it's important to actually separate Donald Trump's rhetoric, which I agree has been far too kind and generous to Vladimir Putin. Separate that from action during his term as president. So I looked into this, this is something you can find yourself on the Brookings Institute website. They have a page dedicated to the actions that the Trump administration had taken against Russia while he was in power. And apparently the Trump administration took 52 different actions against Russia while Trump was in office. I wanna give you a few of those things. For instance, in December 19th, on December 19th of 2018, 18 Russian individuals were sanctioned for their involvement in a wide range of malign activities, including attempting to interfere in the 2016 US election efforts to undermine international organizations through cyber enabled means and the attack in the United Kingdom. Apparently they did some sort of cyber attack in the United Kingdom. September 20th of 2018, 33 Russian individuals and entities were sanctioned for their attempted interference into the election. Like if interference into the election was done on behalf of Donald Trump, it would be weird for Donald Trump to then come into power and then take all of these actions, 52 different actions against Russia as a whole and also against specific individuals within Russia. So that's the kind of stuff that you didn't hear about at all in corporate media. You certainly didn't hear about any of that over at MSNBC. So hearing Paul Begala say that just, it's frustrating because it's devoid of any facts or any ground in reality. I Yeah, well, I wouldn't say any. Look, the it's hard to avoid seeing Trump grovel to Putin. And we all saw it with our He own. does. Yeah, we He does rhetorically. Yeah. I don't know why he does it rhetorically. Uh, but. I know why. It's super obvious. Same reason he does it with the Saudis. The same reason uh, he did it for Israel when Sheldon Adelson gave him a hundred million dollars for his elections twice over. Uh, money, that's it. Uh, Trump's not a complicated guy, super easy to figure out. He thinks that the Russians have gotten the money in the past, which they have. They used some it appears that they used to money launder through Trump's Properties, and there was a lot of talk about that earlier, but I guess that's long gone, and they're not going to ever be able to prove that. But he thinks maybe they'll do it again in the future. So, and and Erdogan used this in Turkey. Oh, maybe we build you a big Trump Tower in Istanbul. Anyone who promises him money, he, he'll work for. He doesn't care. So he just looks at Putin as a piggy bank. Uh, now, having said that, he did take all those actions against Russia. I, I had these debates many years ago, and I would always say, yeah, there's no question he did take those actions, and so. But overall, like, it's not the winning issue Democrats think it is. They already tried this. No one cared then, no one cares now. The only people who care are Democrats in Washington who are deluded into thinking that we're all going to be scared if they just say the word Russia. And and, and look at Bagal. Look, everything in, in, on television is just theater. Uh, you know, but Biden, he, you know, he's. Taking a fight to Putin. What does that even mean? What is it? Was he, is he going to wrestle him? Uh, like you're taking the fight to him by shoveling hundreds of billions of dollars to the defense contractors to give old weapons to Ukraine and keep the rest of the money. Uh, but that's what you would have done because the defense contractors are financing you anyway. 
what else are we going to do? Oh, he called him an SOB and a private fundraiser. Ooh, this is dumb. To do something for the American people and get off of a completely failed political strategy that's not only not working, but annoying the living hell out of everyone in the country.